It's remarkable how successful a man can be if he avoids consistently being stupid. Don't call me stupid. Seriously, have you ever thought about how much farther along you would be in life, how much more successful if you hadn't made some of those stupid mistakes? Yeah, getting into that fight, which you won by the way, but you still ended up in jail. The time you had a little bit too much to drink, thought you were fine to drive, got pulled over and found out you weren't? Or what about that relationship that moved at the speed of light? Everyone warned you, but no, you were married and divorced within 30 days and your bank account wasn't just zero, it was in the negative. Gents, we've all made stupid mistakes and I think we can agree that if it wasn't for them, we would be way more successful. It would be easy to achieve what we want. Well, in today's video, gents, I want to talk about the major style mistakes that are holding you back. The stupid things a lot of guys consistently do that sabotages their image. Now, you may not know, I've got an ebook with this same title. I published a decade ago, and I'm proud to tell you, we've had almost a half a million men download this ebook over the last 10 years. But I went back and I looked at this ebook and I realized, you know what? This can be better. I want to talk about deeper issues. I really want to make sure that this is up to date. So, guess what, guys? I've updated this ebook, I've made it even better, and it's yours absolutely free down in the description of today's video. I'm going to link right over to it. Go grab this free ebook. This video, I'm going to touch lightly on the seven sins that ebook, I'm going to go into a lot more detail and give you actionable steps. So, go check it out. It's yours free. The link is in the description of today's video. Style sin number one, apathy. Gents, there's a simple reason why most men don't dress sharp. It has nothing to do with money, has nothing to do with time, it has everything to do with apathy. They don't care. They don't give a Seriously, if it really mattered to them, they would find a way. I've talked to guys that on a budget of almost nothing, they still find a way to be well-dressed. How do they do this? They go to thrift stores. They ask friends and family for donations. They go out there and they try to find a way because if there is a will, there is going to be a way. And that's why all the time I have people reach out women about, okay, hey, my husband, I want him to dress better. I want my boyfriend to look sharp. Antonio, can you help him? And the answer is no. He has to want it himself because if a man doesn't want something, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force him to drink. Now, I get the mindset of the guy that's apathetic to style. He really just doesn't see the point. Why does it matter? What we should focus in on are degrees. We should focus in maybe on education. We should focus in on action. What's in the heart, right? That's what society tells you. Well, here's the truth. Yes, that does matter, but you know what? People make judgments all the time. Yes, we want to live in a world in which people see deep down who you are and they know your feelings, but most people don't care about that. They're going to look at you and they're going to make a snap judgment. This is human nature, human behavior at its finest because this helps us conserve energy. It helps us process a lot of information. We make snap judgments all the time and guess what? People are making snap judgments about you. Now, personally, I love it when a man wakes up. All of a sudden, he starts to care. You know why? Because he was rejected and someone had the courage to tell him, you know, it's because you don't look the part. If you just improved your style, you're like a diamond in the rough and I love this because so many guys have put in the time. They've got the experience. They've got the education. They've got the passion, but they realize they're missing that one tire. They're like a three-wheeled Ferrari going down the interstate, sparks flying, but when they get that fourth tire, they go from 10 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour in a matter of seconds because all of a sudden, they get it. They understand that people, yeah, make these snap judgments, but I've got a lot to offer the world. So, I'm going to dress in a manner, not because I care about clothing, but I care about my message. I care about making a difference in this world. I care about representing my family and all of a sudden, when you've got that why, you You've got that reason that drives you. All of a sudden, you're no longer apathetic to style. You understand that it is simply a tool, like any other tool in your toolkit to be able to help you achieve your dreams. Guys, you've got to take the time to find your why. If you take nothing else from this video, I want you to take a few moments to think about why are you here on this planet? What is your purpose? And this isn't something that is given to you. This is something that you find and you develop for yourself. And that's the beauty of it is you get to determine this. You can shape it. You can adjust it. You can mold this as you evolve over time and every single day, you can look at this and reflect upon it. Now, to make this video a little bit more interesting, down in the comments, I want you to go down there and type your why. And to make this fun, I've got some new challenge coins here at Armor Us I want to send your way. Beautiful, right? And guys, I'm going to give away quite a few because I love seeing you guys take action, becoming the man you know yourself to be. Style mistake number two, not prioritizing. 
So imagine you're taking an exam, 100 questions, and the teacher tells you the first four questions. These are going to account for 64% of your grade. The next 16, the first 20, that's going to account for 80% of your grade. And those remaining 80, those are going to account for only 20% of your grade. If you've only got 50 minutes on this exam, where are you going to spend most of your energy? On those first 20, specifically on those first four, because they're going to yield you the biggest return. You want to make sure you get those first four right, then that next 20, because if you can do that, you're going to get at least an 80%. Now, you economists out there, you know what this is called, the Pareto principle. And the idea here is that certain inputs bring you much bigger outputs. In a nutshell, certain actions, certain decisions are much more important than others. And you need to give the time, you need to actually make sure that you're making the right decision because the consequences of a wrong decision are going to be a lot steeper. So, how does this apply to style? Well, a big part of dressing sharp is understanding what do you have for resources, money, and time, and how are you going to deploy them in a way that you're going to get the biggest return on your investment. Because if you're a student just starting off, you're maybe in law school, you have very little time, very little money, but at the same time, you got to put your best foot forward. How are you going to put together a series of outfits? Or maybe you're a consultant, you just got promoted and you're trying to make a decision, hey, I'm going to be engaging with clients a lot more. Maybe it's time to step up my game. Or maybe you're in your 50s, changing careers, you've got a little bit of a tight budget. At the same time, you want to make sure that you look young, that you look like you've got energy, that you're bringing excitement to the table. The key to dressing sharp in all of these instances is asking the right questions so you can then focus in on the particular areas that are going to give you the biggest return on your investment. That being said, we're going to want to first look at the foundation of your image and I call this the style pyramid. The style pyramid consists of three parts, communication, cut, and construction. And that leads us to style sin number three, the wrong message. So, the foundation of the style pyramid is communication. This is the function of the clothing. What message does this send to the world and is that consistent with the message you do want to send? So, imagine a naked man runs into a room and yells fire. What are we thinking? Okay, first up, this guy is crazy. Wear are his clothes? Someone may go check to make sure there isn't a fire, but most of us are simply going to think, wow, this is kind of awkward and embarrassing versus a fireman coming in dressed in that uniform, he says fire, we immediately get out. Why? Because the clothing he's wearing sends that signal of authority, competency that this is a guy that knows what he's talking about when it comes to this particular subject. Now, that's an extreme example. But so many of us in our heads, we've got a vision of who we are, of what we want to send to the world, that we're going to be the successful business guy, that we're going to start up that nonprofit, that we're going to be the guy, we're going to be the rock at our church. Let me ask, do you dress the part? Do you look like that successful man that you know yourself to be? Yeah, maybe you're 10 years out, maybe 20 years out, but the point being today, you can start practicing dressing in that way so that you consistently send the message of where you know you're going. And I'm not saying you got to wear a suit. I know some of you guys work as plumbers, you work as roustabouts, you drive buses, you do hard jobs that require clothing that's, yeah, going to get dirty. But let me ask, do you have a uniform? Does that clothing send the message you want to send? If you own the company, why don't you have a uniform? Because when your guys show up early and that woman who's at home alone with her kids, she's looking out the window, oh, the plumber's not supposed to arrive for 45 minutes. Who's this guy? He just looks dirty and it's kind of a rough neighborhood. She's not going to answer the door. Point being, is your clothing, your image sends a message and understand that and control it. I also know that some of you guys work in specialty positions. Maybe you're a lawyer at a construction firm. Yeah, everyone at your company dresses down, but you're the guy that pays attention to all the paperwork. You make sure you write those million dollar deals. You make sure all the details are in place. So, guess what? You can dress like the lawyer. I'm not saying you want to wear a three-piece suit, but I am saying maybe you do want to put on a jacket. Maybe you do want to look the part of the guy that dots all of his I's and crosses all of his T's. Maybe you're an engineer at a company and yes, you're in the office sometimes, but you're out there on the site, you're making sure. So, you've got clothing like a sports jacket, you wear rugged boots, you've got jeans, you got something that you can dress up because on the evenings, afternoons, sometimes you got to give presentations to the suits, to the CEOs. Other times, you're out there with the guys on the project making things happen so you can strip that jacket off and you can simply roll up the sleeves and get your hands dirty if need be. Now, specifically, how do you make decisions on what to wear, especially when the decision is a little bit confusing? So, first up, I look professionally. What is required of your profession? Next up, I'm going to look 
culturally? I'm going to say, okay, in your area, are there certain restrictions? Is it something that maybe you want to address in a certain manner to be able to show respect? I'm also going to pay attention to the environment. Very important if you're working down near the equator or if you're up in the Arctic that you dress appropriately. And finally, I'm going to pay attention to needs and your own individual style wants. I think it's fun to be able to incorporate that, but don't do it at the expense of basically looking professional. Now, gents, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to smash that like button. It feeds the algorithm. That lets YouTube know that, hey, this video is good. It's useful. It will help more men find this video so that we can create a better dressed world and build this community. Because if you're new here to Real Men Real Style, please click on that subscribe button. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you know when we have new videos coming out, which come out pretty much every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Style sin number four, bad fit. The vast majority of men wear clothing that doesn't fit them. And of that, most of them wear clothing that's way too large. I get it. We think larger clothing is going to be more comfortable. We're also constrained because when you walk into a store, a lot of the options out there, they just fit baggy. And it's not very easy for most guys to be able to find a tailor. I will say finding a tailor, getting to know his or her name and taking your clothing to be get adjusted is going to be one of the smartest decisions you can make when it comes to your overall image. Seriously, clothing that fits, specifically clothing that fits for your body type is just going to make you look better. Now, there's a wide range of different body types out there and down in the description of today's video, I'm going to link to a video that actually goes into more detail about dressing for your body type. But I am going to say, be honest with yourself. Understand what body type you are and then dress in clothing that's going to accentuate, going to make that body type look better. If you're a skinny guy, you're going to want to wear clothing that doesn't make it look like you're wearing your big brother's clothing. You're going to want to wear things that fit a bit closer to the body, that have the right patterns, that are giving you a bit more heft. You're going to want to wear pieces that simply don't make you look like you're going to blow over in the wind. Instead, it makes you look better proportioned. Maybe you're a big guy. Maybe you're heavy. Or maybe you're, yeah, you're about 70 pounds overweight. I get it. That's the body you have today. Yeah, you're going to hit the gym. You're going to make the changes, but let's dress what you've got right now. What we want to do is square up those shoulders. We want to make you look taller because looking taller, looking more square is going to be better than looking around. It's going to help to distribute out that weight. In addition, I really think you want to look large and in charge. You don't want to look fat and sloppy. And what about for you guys in great shape, you bodybuilders out there, you're thinking, oh, I got it easy. No, you know the truth. The truth is it's very difficult to dress for that body type. She got that thin waist with those huge thighs. You've got that good sized chest. You've got an issue with drop. Drop is the difference in circumference of your chest and your waist. And most things that you put on your body, they look baggy. They look really ill proportioned. And if you get it close, fit too close, all of a sudden you're going to look like a cartoon character. So what's the balance? That's where finding the right tailor, maybe having shirts, even some jackets, trousers, custom made is going to go a long way to making sure that you look good and that, yeah, you don't, yeah, you don't look like a cartoon. Now, another key to understanding good fit is understanding not to jump on the latest and greatest trends. You see the skinny ties, then all of a sudden we got wide ties. Right now we're seeing loose clothing coming back after going through this whole skinny phase. The point being, when you understand your body type and what looks good on you, all of a sudden you see right through those trends and you're focusing on what works for me. In summary, gents, fit is king. And if you get this right with your clothing, it's going to go a long way in just making you look good. Style sin number five, buying cheap, poorly made clothing. One of the biggest problems we're trying to dress well nowadays is that most of the clothing out there is cheap, disposable, and made in a way that it will fall apart very quickly. It's not made to last. It's that whole fast fashion. We want you to buy it. It's going to fall apart. You're not going to use it anymore. And then you're going to go out and buy more. Now, the obvious problem here is waste buying things and throwing them in the landfills. But there's also the issue of it's very difficult to be able to find something that is going to stand up to the test of time and even more difficult yet finding something that's going to look better over time. That being said, if a man knows what he's looking for, if he pays attention to the construction, to the build, to the materials that the clothing is made from, you can still find quality pieces out there that are going to last you a long time. And in some cases, a lifetime. Let's start with shoes. One of the first things you want to look for is the construction. I really like a Goodyear welt or a Blake stitched. 
That being said, I understand that certain types of glue and cement construction make sense when you want to go with a lighter shoe. You want maybe something with a rubber sole if you're very price sensitive and you want to find something under a hundred bucks. But if you can save up your money, I think this is one of the best things is yes, save up the money, cry once about that price, but get something, get a pair of shoes that can be re-sewn, that can be re-put together. You can have that bottom sole replaced and all of a sudden you've got something that is going to last you 20 years. 30 years if you take care of those uppers. Next up, let's talk about jackets and coats. Two other expensive items that if you're going to spend a little bit more money on, make sure you're getting made from a luxury material, preferably wool, but there are some exceptions. There are other options out there. Maybe you want cotton, maybe you want something in linen, but pay attention to the stitching, to the construction. How did they build the inside of the jacket? Learn to ask these questions and all of a sudden, maybe you're not going to go out there and buy the most expensive, but you're going to know what to look for and all of a sudden, when you see a great well-made jacket on sale, half the price, you're going to understand, hey, I can jump on this. This is a good deal. Even though it costs still a few hundred bucks, it's something that's worth the investment because the right jacket that fits to the body is going to last you 10, 15, 20 years if you take care of it. Now, when it comes to items that are worn closer to the body, like shirts, trousers, underwear, items that are thrown in the wash multiple times, these aren't going to last nearly as long. That being said, you still want to make sure that they're going to last as long as they can. So, when you're looking at your shirts, you want to make sure you get 100% cotton, preferably Egyptian or a longer strand cotton. You're going to want to also pay attention to the stitching. Make sure you get, you know, like 15, 14, 18 stitches per inch. That right there is going to tell you that they spent time on the construction and that it's going to hold together under multiple washes. Perhaps the best piece of advice I can give you to identify quality is take the time to stop into a higher end menswear store. See what it's all about. Put in your hands that quality construction. Look at that jacket that cost $800. Look at those shoes that cost $400. Check out that watch that cost thousands of dollars and ask questions. Look at the detail. Hold it in your hands and feel the quality of the construction. Touch that fabric. See what cashmere really feels like because all of a sudden, you're not going to be able to unfeel it and you're going to have these higher tastes, these higher expectations. You're going to see that your rough wool sweater is nice, but it's not cashmere. That that watch you have, Seiko, great brand, but not the same as Rolex and all of a sudden, you're going to realize, okay, there is something to be said about higher quality. Is it worth it to you? Well, that's a decision you're going to have to make, but I want you to understand that it's there and it's real. The next style sin I want to talk about being uncouth. Now, understand, I'm not saying that you need to have a top hat and a cane and walk around in a tuxedo. No, I mean, if that's your style, cool. But what I am saying is take the time to understand etiquette. Take the time to educate yourself when it comes to proper manners and human interaction. This isn't about you not being able to be you. I get it at home when you're alone, you pass gas, you burp, you do all this right there at the dinner table and you think it's funny. But when you've been invited to a holiday party and your friend, his wife spent a lot of time setting everything up, bringing in the right people, she had a dress code. Guess what? You ignored that dress code that hurt her feelings. She noticed it. Yes, you don't feel, they said, don't worry about it, but it was something that was clearly there. This is a form of communication. It's simply good manners. It's showing respect to this family. All of these things can be avoided if you take the time to educate yourself and you understand that at these type of parties, it's not about you just having uncontrolled fun. This is about somebody enjoying the moment, trying to create memories and understanding it's about the environment and how we work together. And that's why I'm bringing this up because I see so many guys that, yeah, you're dressed nice, you're wearing a suit, yet you treat other people like crap. On the inside, you've got to be somebody who pays attention to others, that understands that it's about respect that it's about, you know, giving of yourself and otherwise you're just, yeah, you're just an animal dressed like a well-dressed man, but that is a empty suit and people will see through it very quickly. In its simplest form, manners is a way to be able to show other people respect through your actions. So, make sure that you're paying attention to the situation and that you treat others with the respect they deserve. The next style sin is chaos. So, years ago on Christmas, my son got the AT-AT Star Wars Lego set. 
amazing set. But I said, hey, unpack this. I went off to do other things, come back, and there's a huge pile of Legos. Now, if you're familiar with these big sets, you don't want to do that. You want to unpack individually and you want to have the instructions. I couldn't find those either. It was chaos. Now, we eventually did find those instructions and build the set, but it took longer than expected. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because this is like so many men's wardrobes. You just randomly start in places, you buy socks here, you buy shoes there, you buy a jacket, you buy a shirt and no idea about how it's going to work together. And this is one of the biggest mistakes when you're building and improving your wardrobe. Guys, you've got to have a plan of action. You've got to have a systematic way that you're going to go about building and improving this wardrobe. The first part of a plan of action is inspiration. This is the end goal. What do you want to look like? What do you want your style to be like? And this is something where you want to collect pictures, images. That's why I love YouTube. There's so many different style inspirations out there, so many different types of style that you can find and explore. Maybe go over to Instagram, look at all the different options there. If Instagram is your thing, I know we've got a great Pinterest page. Point being is find someone that inspires you. This can be a celebrity. This can be an actor. This can be somebody that you saw in a movie years ago and it's old school. Yeah, but you know what? You bring it today and it's still going to work. Now, some of you guys may be thinking, ah, isn't someone going to be able to tell that I'm trying to dress just like Cary Grant, Ryan Gosling, Idris Elba? Aren't they going to be able to tell that yet I stole this outfit from this actor? The answer is no. They're just going to simply say, you look good. I love the way that you're dressing. And that right there is going to give you the strength to do it again, to find some other great outfits, some other great inspiration so that you can start to evolve. That You've got a picture of where you want to take your style. Now, the next part of your plan of action is to take inventory of what you've got in your closet and to identify where do you need to plug the holes? Because you may have tons of shirts, but you don't have any jackets. You've got tons of shoes, but actually not too many socks, not too many great looking trousers. So that's where you're going to want to spend your money, your time, making sure that you plug those holes immediately with items that you're going to wear and that you actually need. The next step in your plan of action is you want to learn to leverage the power of the interchangeable wardrobe in its purest form. This is where every pair of trousers, every jacket, every shirt, every pair of shoes is going to match with the other items in your wardrobe. So if you were only owning 12 items, three outfits, right? Three, 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 and three. No, actually 81 outfits when you multiply them across the board. And that's not including bringing in hats or bringing in a few accessories here to get that number even higher. Now, in the real world, does it always work out this way? No. But in general, you want to make sure the first items you're lining your wardrobe with, your core wardrobe with, are going to be these interchangeable pieces that are going to serve you multiple times with multiple outfits because the most expensive items you'll ever buy are the ones you do not wear. So I want to make sure that you've got these quick wins, that you've got these items in your wardrobe that you're going to get the miles out of. Now, gents, if you enjoyed this video and you want more, you're going to want to go grab this free ebook I've got for you right here, The Seven Deadly Sins. In this video, I just touched on the surface and what I cover in this ebook. So guys, don't wait. Go grab it. This is yours absolutely free. I'll link to it down in the description. So what video to watch next? How about how to dress for your body type? I alluded to it in this video, but I didn't go into much detail. In this video right here, I go into the detail. So if you're skinny, if you're tall, if you are short, if you are big, you're going to want to watch this video. If you're muscular, if you are, you know, fit, I cover your body type in this video. So go check it out.